Some of you might remember this from last year's Computex. It's actually something that looks like mushroom UFO. Depends on how you look at it. But let's look at this cooler that's been like a year. Yeah, it's been in production R&D for quite some time and they've shown it off, teased us for quite some time and let's do a quick unboxing and have some initial test results together with some beautiful comments on its design. Let's just unbox it very quickly right here. This is the Master A G100M. It's a low profile CPU cooler. Looks like a mushroom, good for your low profile builds, small form factors. UFO. Oh, the UFO. So, transparent fan because you need RGB, why not? Thick so, foam. You thick foam, good for protection. So, it doesn't crash like a mushroom. <laughs> it's a good design if you have a thick foam for your coolers. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to bend the fins or something, right? Yes, especially during transport. Let's talk about the general package. You see warranty information, not gonna touch about that. Uh, user manual, guide. yes we need this as we are installing it on a on an AMD 2700X. Yes, AM4 which is this part. At the back here it's all Intel, at this part here it's all AMD. So, okay, let's just spread it right here. Okay, so there's two packs of Accessories, thermal paste as usual, small tube, screws for 2011 right here, 2011, okay, so this one turns out to be RGB controller, RGB stuff here, two pins, which I have no idea why, for yeah. now. This one is, I think it's only to power up the RGB. It's not meant to be controlled through your motherboard. There's button on this thing, right? Yeah. Yes. There's three so buttons here. Controlled by this thing instead of your motherboard. Kind of hard to show here, so... And it's using more legs. So, plan for your cable management. Okay, that aside, you'll have this mounting screws bracket. Lots of metals, plastics going on here. So the bracket right here, you can see Cooler Master only gave you one, but it's actually one side for Intel, another side for AMD. Yes, AM4, AM3 Plus. They actually support a wide range. So as you can see, all these screw holes are for different platforms. And that's all for the back plate. Yeah, and all this little plastic pieces here okay if you guys are familiar with cooler masters uh, cpu coolers right they often come with this kind of locks plastic locks so that your screws can you know stay in place stay in place it doesn't slice around so there's two types of locks here one the wider one looks like the one for amd and this is obviously intel mm -hmm. So as you can see, there are two different types of retention bracket. One with smaller screw holes and one with a single big screw hole. So this one is for AMD, this one's for AM4 actually AMD, yeah whatever general. And this one's for Intel. So we are going to use only the AMD one. And to screw it in, we are going to refer to the user manual. What? As you can see at the back of the CPU cooler itself, you have two holes. Actually, two holes here don't really matter that much. Just take the bracket, slot it in, align the screw hole. It's a bit difficult to do it one-handed since the other side is not flat. Mm -hmm. Just slide this in. Give it a bit of a finger twist to lock it in place. Take a screwdriver and lock it in place that's how you do it remember the orientation of these wings should be facing inwards not outwards
Voila! This is the G100M installed on a AM4 platform. Mm -hmm. We did encounter some issue. Okay, the issue is we encountered is actually this. When you screw the back plate, yes, with the standoff, technically. Yeah, the, the one that they came off. Yes, they came really it actually, it doesn't came off. It just <laughs> wobbles. Yes. It wobbles and don't worry because the moment when you screw your entire cooler to the standoff, it will stay in place yes. and it won't wobble. Same kind of things happens when uh, that was like back in Hyper 212. You know, that's the X shape mm. retention. Oh, yeah. It's the same, it's almost similar issues, but the moment everything is secure, right? It's tight. It's tightened. So, so no worries on that. Mm -hmm. We're just mentioning that. So if you have some doubt, refer to this video, refer back again. And we did show you some wobble issue just now, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. So this is how it looks like. We have the RGB hooked up and also, of course, the fan. Yes, and it doesn't wobble just to let you see it. Yes, it's very tight right now. You can lift it up using this thing only try not to do that <laughs> yeah don't push too much strain but you can technically do that so we connected it to a gigabyte aorus x470 gaming 7 wi-fi yes very long name but yes so we have some different color modes right here we have pulse as you can see it's just pulsating music not even play you music. You don't have music, so yeah. Static color, so we can change it to whatever color that we like. Purple is Cooler Master's iconic color, of course, so just let's set it to purple instead. That's how it looks like. And then you have a uh, flash, not the flash that moves very fast, so this one will give you a Well, it's not flash, technically, it's just blinking. blinking. Double flash, this one will give you strobe lights and even more epilepsy. And this is demo, which is, I don't know, it'll it's show just you called everything. Demo. Mm -hmm. Yes, as you can see, it doesn't actually sync with the memory we have, so. I'm not gonna bother <laughs> about that, but this is how it looks like yes. in general. And now we are running some stress tests, and you can, I think you can hear some of the sound, you can hear the fan ramping up. Still silent, much more silent, silent than stock cooler, of course. It's running on somewhere around 2.2k RPM. Mm. Very silent. I mean, in open air, of course, you can hear mm. some noise. If you put it in a case, I don't silent think you case. can hear much. Yeah. yeah. So actually, one thing to consider if you're using this kind of blower style yes. coolers, you can cool some of your components around it, especially the VRM heatsink. But just make sure that your heatsink is well designed like this. Mm -hmm. It's using fins instead of a huge chunk of block. Aluminum. Yeah, those with fancy design ones, they're probably gonna block your airflow. But this one, uh, in it's common a very sense, very practical design. Uh huh. Wind blows downwards, it hits the bottom, goes outwards, and then will go through the fin and not against the fin. That's looking pretty good actually for a cooler of this size. Yeah, imagine if you fit this into a cooler, uh, into a case like a mini ITX. What sort of ITX case that you recommend? Well, you have quite a few choices, but if you remember the Elite 11, Elite 110? 110. That was that's, a very good budget that's case. That's a very good way. ITX case actually. Mm -hmm. And then, what's your other recommendation? Other recommendation. Uh, okay, my choice for ITX case will still be uh, the SG13 from Silverstone. Sugo. Yes, I One think. One of my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> personally. I'll, I'll link the review link down below. The Sugo SG13 is actually at the back of this machine right here. As you can see, you do have a bit of height issue with this for certain case. Perhaps. But if you compare it with. You know, yeah. the original one from AMD itself. This is the Rave Prism. Let me put it here. So there's still quite some distance there, but it's just that this looks nicer, right? Uh huh. And you can fit into cases, tight cases, perhaps maybe the B Phoenix portal. So I think that's pretty much a brief overview, a complete brief overview of the uh, G100M. As you can see, mushroom or UFO, you decide how, how it's supposed to be called, but 
this is the whole design of it and uh, oh one thing to mention i did see some issues where the cpu cooler this shroud is blocking the rear fan but i don't see it happening in this case because you do have quite a bit of clearance mm -hmm. but uh, yeah i've seen someone complaining about it so that's something to be careful of and also your RAM high clearance, we're using some quite a low profile RAM actually. It's not actually low profile, but it's more like standard high. Standard because high. if you go for you know those fancy RAMs with Nighthawk, especially Jill. Yes, Jill. They have tall heat sinks and some RGB stuff there. Team groups, that, that Nighthawk thing. That one's it will be quite some issues I, I'll say mm, one more RAM do you think the A data XPG triangle thing oh that fit? thing well haven't actually had one yet so mm. can't comment much until they send us one hopefully hint, hint. yes yeah but mm, any other comments to add not not any extra in particular but yeah we're running on stock by the way and yeah, it's pretty good for this mm. for this form factor. That's all I can say. And uh, do subscribe for more video like this. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.